Hallelujah. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Thank you, Master. And God is good all the time. Amen. No matter how you feel, he's still good. <laughs> uh, turn to Exodus 34. Exodus 34. Are you preparing for the Exodus? Amen. <laughs> Glory. <clears throat> Exodus 34. Very powerful. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Amen. In verse 1, And the Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I'll write these tablets, the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. <laughs> now, I want you to understand that this is a representation when Moses broke the first tablets because there would be another covenant. It was prophetic. People don't understand that he had to break the first tablets. So another one would be written because the Old Testament is a shadow of things to come, saying that there would be another covenant coming. So be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. And no man shall come up with you and let no man be seen without, throughout the, all the mountain. Let neither flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. So he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. Then Moses rose early in the morning, went up to Mount Sinai at the, as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Now the Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity in the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. That's why it's important to repent for the sins of your forefathers. So it doesn't recycle, because it recycles every third and fourth generation. So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Then he said, if now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us. And even though we are stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us as your inheritance. And the Lord said, Behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people whom you are shall see the work of the Lord. For it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Observe what I command you this day. What does it say? Observe that I command you this day. That word command means when God speaks, it means law. When he commands, it means law. When God speaks, it's law. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he says, observe what I command you this day. Behold, I am driving out from before you the Amorite, the Canaanite, the, and the Hiz, uh, Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jezebite, and every other parasite. Repres These were the tribes of giants. These were Nephilim tribes. And he said, I'm going to send you into a place and I'm going to drive, have you drive them out. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be a snare in your midst. But you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and cut down their wooden images. For you shall worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they play the harlot with their gods, and make sacrifice to their gods, and one of them invites you, and you eat of his sacrifice, and you take of his daughters for your sons, and his daughters play the harlot with their gods, and make your sons play the harlot with their gods. 
You shall make no molded gods for yourself. The feast of unleavened bread you shall keep. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread as I commanded you in the appointed time of the month of Abad. For in the month of Abad you came out from Egypt. And all that open the womb are mine, every male firstborn among your livestock, whether ox or sheep. But the firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. And if you will not redeem him, then you shall break his neck. All firstborn of your sons you shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty-handed. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and harvest you shall rest. And you shall observe the feast of weeks and the first fruits of wheat a harvest and the first of ingathering of the years at the year's end. What is he proclaiming? He's proclaiming commands. He's bringing laws. And then he's also telling me about, I am setting forth the feast of the Lord. Three times in a year, all your men shall appear before the Lord, the Lord God of Israel, for I will cast out the nations before you and enlarge in your borders. Neither will any man covet your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in a year. You shall not offer blood of my sacrifice with leaven, nor shall the sacrifice of the feast of Passover be left until morning. The first of the first First fruits of your land you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write these words, for according to the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. Every one of us would have probably died. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now it was so when Moses had come down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out, and he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shown, then Moses would put a veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Now, again, this is called the rule of law. Everyone say rule of law. It is ruled by, in other words, things are ruled by God's law. The law was used to keep people under a rule of protection from each other, from sin, and from the judgment of God. That's why he has laws. And we know that there's laws of the land and so forth. There's physical laws, there's physics and all kinds of other things that are that are laws but God has established a rule of law for me and you through covenant but the rule of law for me and you with God is his word does everybody understand it and and in the word of God he also said because Moses uh, the, he put on the veil and in the in the stones that were written on a representation of a heart that would come because he said that we had a stony heart. We'll talk about that in a second. And it says in the, in the new covenant now in, in, in the Corinthians, Paul writes, he says, now Moses, even the, the veil is still on their eyes of reading the Old Testament. But the veil is removed when one turns to the Lord. Because see, you and I were born with scales on our eyes. And until you turn to the Lord, then those scales begin to be removed. And in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they're removed. That's why it's important to stay filled with the Spirit so that the veil stays removed off of your eyes. The more you lack 
fellowship, the more you lack worship, the more you lack getting in God's presence, then the scales begin to come back. And the heart begins to harden all over again. And Galatians 3. Again, that's one of the ploys of the enemy is to always get people not to abide, fellowship, worship. Amen? If he can get you to just compromise, he gets people to compromise. If he can get them to compromise, then they bit the bait. Amen. The hook is already in the jaw. It's already started. Can God trust someone with a hook in their jaw? Heck no. Verse 19, Galatians 3, 19. He says, what purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of the transgressions till the seed who is Jesus should come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under by the law, kept by kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our what? Tutor to bring us to Christ, who is our mentor. That we might be justified by faith. Face this trust in Christ. It's in his word. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek nor either slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you all are one in Christ Jesus. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Again, the law of the Old Testament was a tutor. And actually, people didn't even know they were sinning until the Lord brought this out. He didn't even know that they were displeasing God. They didn't know. But the tutor of the law was placed until the mentor of Christ through, through God's or through faith in Christ Jesus. In other words, faith is trusting in God's word. Faith is trusting in the price that Jesus paid. Faith is trusting in the exchange that he made on the cross for me and you. In other words, we are accepting it. So we are now trusting in the words of Christ, Jesus, which is the commander in chief, and his laws are now what comes out of his mouth. Everything that proceeds, as the word say, man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Those are laws. This Bible is all full of law. Does everybody get this? Now I'm going to explain something because things, no, we're not under the law. No, we're not. We're not under the law of the Old Testament. But we are under the law of grace. And grace is not God's unmerited favor. Grace is God's plan of escape. That's why Jesus came with the fullness of grace and truth. Why? Because he came to tell everybody to wave out. That's why he says, I, Jesus was the manifested word that was written on stone, now became flesh. Amen. So in this, you and I are saved by grace if we cooperate with grace, which is the plan of God to escape. And what do we escape in? The deception of Satan and the wrath of God. Is everybody okay? Amen. All right. Ezekiel 36. Rule of law. This is where we got to come to a place. That the law of God supersedes any law of man. Any law of a doctor. Does everybody got it? It supersedes any law of court. 
It supersedes everything. Everything. I was supposed to, I was supposed to go to prison again. I, it was mandatory. There was no way out. And so the Lord interceded. Touched the judge's heart. I had a minimum of four years to do. Minimum. Because I've been sentenced a wife once. I had to do four years. Got busted with guns and dope. With a felony. Multiple felonies. You, that person's going to prison. And the Lord said, I'll be your attorney. Because, but his law supersedes the law of man. And I walked out of that courtroom. <coughs> A free man. No prison. Probation, but no prison. <laughs> he wanted to make sure I was going to follow. <laughs> you know, when you get saved, you're on a probation, man. <laughs> you're on probation when you get saved. <laughs> you don't just get God's trust automatically. <laughs> you earn it. That's why people always say, well, grace is God's unmerited favor. No, it isn't. How can you have the favor of God if you haven't earned it yet? No way. That religious stuff. Ezekiel. Is everybody there yet? Amen. I like Ezekiel. Can you imagine all the stuff Ezekiel went through, man? Come on, man. He, was, he saw the tabernacle in heaven. I mean, he was brought all over the place. God flew him everywhere. He had a lot of mile, air mileages. Ezekiel 36, 24. He says, and I will take, come on, read it with me. For I will take you from what? Among the nations, gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your idols. And I will give you a what? New. A new heart. And what else? A new spirit. Everyone say, I got a new spirit. I got a new spirit. And I got a new heart with this spirit. Hmm. So I'll give you a new heart. I'll give you a new spirit. And I will take the heart of what? Stone. Out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit, who is my Holy Spirit, within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, which is also his law. And you will keep my judgments and you will what? You will do them. Now this is powerful. He says, I'm going to cleanse you with my blood. I'm going to give you a new heart, heart of Christ. I'm going to give you a new spirit so that you will be a new person in Christ Jesus and then you will be joined. What happens is your new spirit now is joined with the Holy Spirit. You are now joined. That's what's called joined with the Lord. When you are filled with the Spirit, your spirit now is joined with the Holy Spirit. And what the enemy's always trying to do is separate you. His plan is always separate you. Is everybody okay? Amen. Hallelujah. So honor this new heart, new spirit, God's spirit, being joined with the Holy Spirit, we are under a new rule of law. And that new rule of law is a law of relationship. Everyone say law of relationship. That's called heart relationship. Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Is everybody okay? Amen. So no, we're not under the law. We're under the law of relationship. We're under the law of the spirit of life though. But there is a law of grace for me and you. These are the rule of law. Everything is controlled by law. Everything. There is a rule of everything. And the rule of law of grace is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow me. Amen. Hebrews 10, 5. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. And burnt offering and sacrifices for sins, you had no pleasure. 
Then I said, Behold, I come in a volume of a book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his what? Footstool. Now how is his enemies going to be made his footstool? Through me, in you. Does everybody get it? That's where we did carry on the rest of the ministry. For by one offering he has per perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Okay, now wait a minute. How is he going to put the laws in our hearts and our mind? Through the union of the Holy Spirit with your spirit and the Holy Spirit. It's automatic. It's automatic. You know, I, I share this all the time. And, then, and let me finish this first. And then he adds, then their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, after my visitation from the Lord, I was filled. I mean, I was filled. I couldn't even, it was hard for me to function for weeks. I never read the Bible, but I knew the word. Why? Because the one who wrote the word was living in me. Does everybody get it? I knew what pleased God and I knew what displeased God. I could see things, hear things. We communicated. That's why I kept saying to the Lord, why do I need to have the word? Of, why do I need the Bible? Let's just talk. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. But he kept saying, no, I want you to know the word. Why? Because he wanted to show me things and to be able to teach with the interpretation through the Holy Spirit. And in that, people don't realize in a demonic arena, familiar spirits replace the Holy Spirit. And they don't even know it. Because many people live by how they feel. When a person lives by how they feel, you can be sure that a familiar spirit is there. Because the Holy Spirit does not promote feelings. He promotes truth in Jesus. Does everybody get it? The only feelings the Holy Spirit promotes is peace, joy, and righteousness. Amen? Does everybody get this? This is important. And believe me, I've seen those familiar spirits take people right out. They give desires and all kinds of other stuff. They promote lust. They promote all kinds of things. And they'll speak to you loud and clear. But you must have discernment by the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important to be filled with the Spirit and be filled with God. Amen? I mean, in His Word. Romans 8. So one of the things that the Lord brings here now is a new covenant with the Creator directed by the Holy Spirit in union with your new spirit and the new rule of law. And what begins to happen is divine order begins to establish in your life. Romans 8. Oh, yes. And he will always tell you you're swaying. You're getting out of divine order. But if you're not in fellowship with him and your desires are allowing to dictate everything and your feelings are allowing to dictate everything and he will be gentle and release things, he won't force it. And then he just lets you run until you finally slam into another wall. Or do something stupid. And he says, I've been waiting for you. Romans 8 verse 1. Let's speak it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. 
For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of a sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Why? If you're walking according to the flesh, you're breaking the law. Amen? You're breaking the law. And when you break the law, there's a consequence. For those who live according to the flesh set the minds and the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Why? Because they're lawbreakers. It is the law of the spirit of eternal life. The old law was not heaven bound. It was paradise bound, but that was not heaven bound. That's why Jesus had to descend into paradise to give them a new law so they could come out. And then they were heaven bound. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. He even went down to hell and gave everybody an opportunity. So the law of the spirit of eternal life is now what we walk in also. Old law was not heaven bound until Jesus showed up with a new rule of law. And of course, that new rule of law now is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and what? Follow. Oh. And John 16. One of the things that the Holy Spirit was just constantly impressing on me was people don't believe my word is a law. They don't believe me is a law. The law that supersedes all other laws. If they would just take account that my word is law, things would change. John 16, 12. Would you read it with me, please? Is everybody there? I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for, me, for he will take of what is mine, and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of what is mine. And declare it to you. Now. The spirit of truth. Well what does truth mean? It's law. Why? Because when God speaks it's what? Law. So the Holy Spirit is the law. Enforcer. Does everybody get this? He enforces the law on me and you. He's the one that convicts us. Because we and I are to execute. We're to be executors of the law of God. And everything that we do. In 2 Timothy. Chapter 2. God desires relationship. Run that stop sign or that red light and tell and try and explain your way to the officer that you're under grace. <laughs> you getting a ticket, man. Unless there's the divine intervention, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but officer, I'm under grace. <laughs> tell that to the judge, homie. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the what? Grace, which what is the what? It's law. It's God's law. Amen? It's his word. It's a plan of escape. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. 
You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules or the what? Laws. Does everybody get it? So you and I must abide. There's no crown unless we uh, com uh, com compete according to the rule of the law in Christ Jesus. Does everybody understand this? That's why many people are always using, well, I'm saved by grace. Well, you are saved by grace. But I remember, it's the law of grace. God says, I have a plan of escape for you. And if you're not willing to abide by the way of escape, which God commands, he speaks, the Holy Spirit leads. So there's that area where it's his voice, his word, his presence. He speaks to you through dreams and visions. Everything he says, he commands. And everything he commands is law. Amen? Amen. Romans 7. Romans 7, 21. I find then a what? A law that is evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Now the law of God according to the inward man is because the Holy Spirit is there. It's the law of grace. It's the law of relationship. But I see another law in my members warned against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity, the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from his, this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now the word mind also associates with spirit. So we see here that our spirit united in union with the Holy Spirit is serving the law of God, which is under the law of grace, law of relationship. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? But all the, all, in your old man, your flesh is the law of sin. So there is a rule of law, isn't there? Galatians 6. I'd be persecuted if I was teaching this to a bunch of religious people. <laughs> We're not under the old law. We're under a new one. <laughs> That's why it's called a new covenant. It's the law of the spirit of life. Even Jesus said that. Galatians 6 verse 7. Is everybody there? For he who has what? Galatians 6 7. Is that what I said? For he, has, he who has died has been freed from what? Galatians. Excuse me, I'm in Romans. I guess I didn't roam out of Roman yet. I've been stuck in Roman. Get me out of here. Galatians. Oh, I know I have you in here. Hey, you are. Galatians 6. Glory. In verse 7, they're going to try this again. Do not be what? Deceive. God is not mocked for whatever man sows. He will what? Also reap. That's a law, isn't it? That's for every person on the planet. <laughs> for he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Why? Because they're breaking the law. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Why? Because he's obeying the law. Now remember, these are not the Ten Commandments. These are the words of God Almighty. These are words by the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the law of grace, the way of escape. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we don't want. Lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. See with that what large letters I have written to you with my own hands. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, 
These will compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Hmm. Yeah. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they, are, they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except for in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails, but a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule of law, peace and mercy be upon you and upon the Israel of God. Oh, glory. And Proverbs 30. Verse 5 and 6. Is everybody there? Amen. What does it say? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. It says every word of God is pure. Pure. Colossians 3. Colossians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds <clears throat> and put on a new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and what? And in all. Powerful. You know, the knowledge of Christ is the rule of law. And what does he say in Hebrews 4? In verse 12. You don't have to go there. I'll read it to you. He said, the word of God is what? Living. It's living. The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart and there is no creature he hidden from his sight but all things are naked and open to whom we must give account listen you give account according to the law that's simple you give account according to the rules you break the rules you break the law. Does everybody get this? That's where what you sow is what you what? Reap. So his word is law. And we got to begin to grab hold that the word of God is the law that supersedes everything. Sickness, disease, debt, everything. Every label that's been placed upon you by a doctor or by a person or by a, your parents or your work, your boss or anyone has brought you down, God's law supersedes. Why? Because the word of God tells you who you are. Supersedes everything. If you believe it and you execute it. And I'll close it, Ephesians 2.
Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 2, verse 1. Let's speak it together. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you've been saved through faith. That means trust in him, trust in his word, trust in his law. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Does everybody see that? Praise God. Therefore, remember that you once were Gentiles in the flesh who are now, who are, are called uncircumcised by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at the time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in the ordinances and rituals, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by what? One spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with saints and members of the household of God. In other words, we're no longer dwellers. Amen. Amen. We're not just dwellers. We're patriots of the kingdom of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being a chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into the holy temple in the Lord, and whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So yes, we are under grace. We are under the law of grace because of the word of God is law. And there's a law of relationship. But the law of grace expresses deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow. But what is God's desire of everything? Relationship. Amen. Relationship. The law of relationship. That's why those who are led by the Spirit of God are called what? Sons of God. Why? Because the Spirit of God is the enforcer of the law of God. Does everybody understand it? So that's why if you are led by the Spirit of God, you're submitting to the grace of God, the law of the grace of God, and you're being led by the Spirit. Now you will become a son of God. Remember, Jesus came to fulfill the law that he may release a new covenant. But every covenant has laws. There's a, a binding covenant always has a law. When you go to a... a to buy a vehicle or buy a, get money, borrow money or whatever, they have a contract. A contract is a covenant. You submit to the contract, no problem. You break the contract, you usually lose something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Freedom. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we are under a new rule of law, but there is a rule of law. Never forget it. 
Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace. Lord, bring revelation to your people and bring relationship like there's never been before. We need you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to each and every one and reveal the law of the grace.